Hey, greetings, everyone. Glenn Kelloway from the basement. Uh, it is opening day. Blue Jays, 4 p.m. Eastern. Tampa Bay Rays. Go Blue Jays. I am so excited for baseball season. My favorite sport. Best day of the year. A uh, couple things. I got a new release. I got a box set to open. And I want to talk about a couple of other things. First of all, this is an old concert, but a new release from an old concert. Alice Coltrane, live at Carnegie Hall. Oh, my God. I haven't had a chance to play this yet, but I'm so excited to have it. Um, I am a huge Alice Coltrane fan now. Uh, I think her journey from uh, in Satch in Satcha Dananda is one of the greatest albums of all time. Uh, uh, amazing. Anyway, um, so this album was recorded uh, in New York Carnegie Hall, February 21st, 1971. Uh, the great Alice Coltrane on piano, harp, and percussion. Pharaoh Sanders, tenor saxophone. Uh, so soprano saxophone, flute, fife, and percussion. Archie Shep, tenor saxophone. Soprano saxophone and percussion. Jimmy Garrison, Cecil McBay, McBee on bass. Ed Blackwell, Clifford Jarvis on drums. Uh, the Tulsi, uh, I'm sorry, the man Tulsi is on tambora, which uh, sounds incredible. And Kamur Kramer harmonium. I mean, I am just so excited to delve into this. Very cool. It's just out now. You can buy it on vinyl. You can buy it on CD. Uh, brilliant. Next, I got a new box set. Now, my obsession of the year, I, I, for, I started off Ian Hunter and Rory Gallagher kind of started really late last year. Oh, to the first, I mean, Ian Hunter was the first album I played this year in 2024. Um so I, I was picking up everything I could find by those two artists. And uh, so that was my first thing. Then I got on this Genesis kick. And uh, I, I'm list, re listening to all these uh, 70s Genesis albums and just falling in love with them. And uh, then I got onto a kick with uh, the old British folk stuff, the band Pentangle, with uh, Jackie McShay, Burt Yanch, and John Renborn, how one band had two guitar players that good. When you talk about bands with two great guitar players, they might be the best. Um, I've been buying up Burt Yanch stuff. I owe that to uh, my buddy Jason Arsenault, who showed me Burt's, uh, the two albums that he bought, um, Jack O'Ryan and the first uh, self-titled Burt Yanch album. I have them both on a two for CD, and I love them. Started picking up everything I could get my hands on. Bert and, uh, and John Renborn did uh, some albums together. They're incredible. Uh, if you like acoustic guitar with a blues and folky tint to it, I mean, uh, this is just heaven. So um, there's a box set that uh, gets rave reviews. I have been looking at it for a while, and I pulled the trigger on it today. Bert. Yanch at the BBC. Now, this came out, I think, around 2021, 22. Um, can't see a date on it here. But according to the hype sticker, 8 CD box set with 40 pages of liner notes and photos. Breathtaking collection featuring an absolute feast of BBC sessions and live broadcasts. I'm going to sneeze. That's why I freaking, Jesus, the four-minute mark. <laughs> Kazoon hike. You're so good looking. Eight CD deluxe box set with 40 pages of liner notes and photos. Breathtaking collection. A breathtaking collection. Featuring an absolute feast of BBC sessions and live broadcasts with liner notes from Colin Harper. Now, if you're on the Steve Hoffman music forum and you search Burt at the BBC, Colin uh, contributed a lot to the comments that are being made on there. He talked a lot about his work on this. From BBC in concert, later with Jules Holland, 
uh, C Music's Freak Zone and Live from 1966 onwards, including over nine hours of BBC sessions spanning Yanch's entire career. Featuring rare, legendary performances, many previously unreleased recordings, including collaborations with John Renborn, Jackie Mache, Johnny Marr, Bernard Butler, and Ralph McTell, and more. The very essence of folk music, Bert Yanch provided inspiration for everyone from Paul Simon and Neil Young to Led Zeppelin and countless folk revivalists. Uh, Bert Yanch, there's a little quote here from The Guardian. Bert Yanch was that rarity, a musician who really did deserve to be regarded as a legend. So uh, let's open this baby up. I'm really excited to get this. I drove to Zap Records this morning in Coburg, Ontario to pick it up. It's a half an hour drive each way. And Zap Records is my favorite independent record store on the planet. Coburg, Ontario. You can look them up. They'll ship stuff to you. Tim, the owner, tell them I sent you. I'm trying to keep the hype sticker. Okay. Let's go. So hardcover, same size as like an album. So that's really good. This is also available on a four LP set, which I heard sounds amazing. Um, it comes with a download card. So you can download the tracks that you don't get on the vinyl that you get on the CD, which is very cool to, to do that. So let's see. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's the way the CDs are housed at the front, and I'm assuming at the back. I would assume correctly. And then in the middle is pages and pages and pages of text and history. Bert Yance, BBC Sessions, 1966 to 2009. I think Bert died in 2010 or 2011. Um, I'm currently reading a book called uh, Dazzling Stranger, uh, the story of Bert Yance and the British folk and blues uh, music, it's called. And it's a, just a great book. It's really in-depth. Like, I mean, there's you're going to read about people you've never heard of before, but they're, you know, they all played a part in developing that music. Um, a lot of it was, uh, inspired by Bill, Big Bill Brunzi, a lot of the blues guys, and, uh, Pete Seeger on the folk side. Let's see if we get any cool pictures. Uh, yeah, so, anyway, you get the idea. Um, I'm very anxious to listen to that. Very cool. Okay, so I did... A, I called it In Conversation. I did it Monday night, two hours, basically my one-on-one -on -one series with uh, my friend Rob Lawson, who is an author, author, Robert Lawson. He's written three books. You've probably been hearing me talking about it. He did one, The Listener's Guide to uh, Nazareth, to Cheap Trick, and the most recent one was The Guess Who. These books are amazing because they're not just an encyclopedia that's very dry and you just look up information it's told in a story style so you kind of get a biography but it's all based on the music robert made sure when he uh, brought artists on board to interview for the book that he made them understand that his purpose was to talk about their music career only they he didn't want any he didn't care about groupies and drugs and rehabs and marriages and girlfriends and all that crap. It was just, it's strictly music, which is great. So awesome. Robert is also right now finishing up a book on the music of Stephen Van Zandt outside of kind of the, the whole career of Stephen Van Zandt outside the Springsteen band. There, there is a chapter on, on how could you do a book about little Stephen without talking about Bruce. So there's that. There's also, like, I think a chapter on The Sopranos and how uh, how he got involved in that show and some stories. And um, it's, it's probably going to come out in September, October. But anyway, the point is, my interview was frickin' great. Or interview or discussion, conversation. It was m the favorite thing I've ever done on YouTube, and I'm really disappointed by the amount of views. 200 and some views. I think only 14 or maybe just under 20 people watched it live. I thought I was going to have a really good receptive audience for this and I'm totally disappointed because it's really interesting my wife Lynn watched the whole thing and she could give a crap 
about hearing the stories of all this stuff but there's some really interesting stories great story about john lennon uh at the uh, double fantasy sessions with the cheap cheap trick guys i love that um just robert is a great guy uh, i'm telling you please do yourself a favor and watch it just fast forward through it and watch bits and pieces it was a great discussion okay now during that discussion because um, I've known Robert for probably about 12, 13 years. Um, he turned me on to a lot of music over the years. And one I brought up with him was or, um, Alejandro Escovedo. I don't know how many people are fans of his. He's a singer-songwriter from the Austin area. Um, this is one of his albums that I really love, Bourbonitis Blues. This is a great, great album. This guy is amazing and deserves much more attention. Um, check this album it's great there's a great rocker on here called guilty um there is uh some great just ballad singer songwriter stuff like amsterdam um just a, it's a just a great record alejandro's on tour right now he's coming to toronto and the one night that i can't go of course he's here at the horseshoe tavern and the tickets are only 30 bucks so if you're in toronto april 17th this guy's supposed to put on a great live show. I've never seen him live, but um, great, great talent. He's got a ton of records out. And uh, the other thing, because he, uh, Robert had written a book on the Guess Who, I've been listening to the Guess Who like crazy over the last few days, and I just wanted to share the uh, music of the Guess Who with Share the Land. This is my favorite Guess Who album. This is just a great freaking record. And... Um, it has so many great tracks on it. starts off with Bus Rider, which was a hit. It's a real rocker. Um, Do You Miss Me, Darling. Uh, Hand Me Down World was another hit. Share the Land was a huge hit. Um, Hang On to Your Life, another one. I mean, and there's a great song called Come Down Off the Money Bag, which is just awesome. It, like a, it starts off with a, a kind of a slow uh, acoustic blues thing and then turns into kind of like a country rocker thing. It's really cool. And... Uh, just a fantastic record. This is the album after Randy Bachman left, um, for after American Woman. Uh, Kurt Winter joined as a guitar player and really added a lot to the band. I mean, they didn't miss a step. This is just a fantastic record because American Woman's a great record too. Like I, They've just got so many great albums. What makes their albums really good is they've got like two, pretty much at least one or two great kind of songs that you would find on a comp or a hits package. And then the rest, the the deep cuts are all really strong. Like, it, they're just a great band. How they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I have no frickin' idea. Anyway, I'm off to listen to Burt Yanch for a while, and then I'm going to watch the Jays at 4. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please give me some thumbs, whatever you want to do with them. Just do it. Thumbs. It's all over the place. Okay, thanks. See ya.